Well, welcome to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. You know, we live in such an hour that we once again have to discover that place in which we are swallowed up in, overwhelmed, so raptured up in Him that we are never the same. I look at those great heroes of faith, including Paul, David Brenner, and many others that truly changed their generation, turned that world upside down, made such an impact that was beyond themselves. Truly, they were a blessing, not just to their generation, but to every generation since. And it was because they came to that place of such a divine encounter, an experience of the love of the Father, revealed through Jesus, that they were overwhelmed, swallowed up, consumed in it. In this episode, I'm going to talk and share insight from John G. Lake. And I really pray, Father, that in the name above all names, and through what He did, through what You did, Jesus, that in each one of us there would be such a thirst, desire for that love. May we experience it even now. Father, give us eyes to see, ears to hear. Give us a heart so in tune with you, Holy Spirit. Teach us. Remind us of all that Jesus did and what it really means. Reveal that love. That, Father, we might know it. That we may fully experience it, believe it. That every fiber of our being would be saturated, marinated. That we be embalmed in it. And that the world would see that we are marked as yours forever. I thank you, Father that Jesus be glorified in this word, let it be a now word, a right word that ministers life. In the name of Jesus we pray. And the church said, Amen. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1a. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 13, sorry, uh, to chapter 14, verses 1a. Now abides three things. Faith, hope, love, now abides. And I'm so grateful that we have an abiding living faith, an abiding living hope, and an abiding living love. But he said that the greatest of these is love. We need to be swallowed up in it. We need to understand it. We have taken this love and we have downgraded it and we've interpreted it through our human thought. We think of it through our perspective, but this is a heavenly love. It's not a dead love. It's living. It has life to it, and everything that it touches, it causes to come to life. It is a heavenly love, and the only way we can know it is by revelation. See, you cannot know the certain words that I grew up in Ireland, that these words are very Irish. And we have an impression over here in America. We have an opinion of what they mean, but we get it wrong. It falls short because we need somebody from Ireland to bring over an understanding and make it known. And so the Father who's rich in this love, that's a living love because he's alive, has to send Jesus to reveal it. And now the Holy Spirit points and opens up and shows you Jesus, that we might know this love. We have taken, used that term, God is love, and we use it, and we so abuse it, because we don't know it. And the world can only see that love through the church, but the church doesn't know it. There are so few people swallowed up and changed, radically transformed by it. The Word declares that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The outflow of our life is what we contain in us. And so few believers have the secret place of their heart, the throne of their affection, crowned with Jesus, given wholly to Him. John G. Lake said, We boast of our development in God, 
We speak glowingly of our spiritual experiences, but it is only once in a while that we find ourselves in the real love of God. We don't talk about, when we, if I put up a video on the love of God, so few people want to listen to it because we know all that. But the reality is, very few of us have experienced it. And the very thing that most of us miss in our life is love. The very thing that the world craves and is seeking for is a real love. They walk in this relative mindset and a relative love that bows to circumstances and political opinion that can change based on any number of things. And the problem is, if you're in the good books, then that love is good towards you. But if you're in the bad books, God help you. But see, the good thing about His love, it is absolute and it never changes. And it's faithful. And the access to that love is the same through Jesus You can never qualify because the love is too perfect, too great, too beyond. There is no price that you can pay that would make enough to to qualify you for it. But it is in the simple acceptance of what Jesus did. And that's where it all starts, where we must personally be wrecked. See, we all come to a place where we've had a degree of revelation of what his life's done for us. Because we see ourselves as so good and we recognize part wrong and we're grateful. And that part that we see wrong, we bring to the cross and we lay it at the cross and we receive Jesus and we're good. But God wants full surrender because no good thing dwells in your flesh. He's not interested in what you can bring. He's interested in his surrender to show you something bigger than you, greater than you. Lake at it. The greater part of the time, we are in ourselves rather than in Him. That evidence is just one thing, that Christ has not yet secured that perfect control of our life, that subjection of our nature, that absorption of our individuality, so that He is able to impregnate it and maintain it in Himself. We recede, we draw back, we close up, we imprison our Lord. We live in an hour where it's my rights, my feelings, and it's all about me. You're not hearing me. You're not thinking about my feelings. Yet Jesus didn't turn around and say, I am the Lord. I made you. How dare you treat me this way? How dare you not consider my feelings, my hurts? I could wipe you out in an instant. But in his perfect love, he was led as a lamb to the slaughter. He yielded all, gave all, secured love. And that's what God wants for you. That no matter what's happening around you, you are secure. The world doesn't have that. And the world therefore seeks and cries out because it's seeking a security and a love. They're broken in need. And the Father is calling you to come in that you may fully experience His love and stand secure on a rock that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. A place where you are always far exceedingly overcoming, where you walk in victory, kept. Who can separate you from this love? What can take you from this love? In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 2 and 3, If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but I do not have love, it profits me nothing. This love, again, we must never degrade to that human love. And so many people see in all these doings. But he never said, Paul, in this chapter, love does. He said, love is. And we understand that because God is. And that love is because God is. And when we come into that place of such surrender, his love in us does what it is. His love is patient. His love is kind. His love is long-suffering. It was demonstrated in Jesus. You can see every aspect of what love is in the life of Jesus. Because love is. 
And what love is, love does. We interpret, we do all these things. See, there is love for you. But God looks the heart. God looks deeper. And many people are doing things out of brokenness. They're doing things out of self-opinion. What they value, see, it's always a revelation of what they value. And God wants an outflow where it's a love, where you love Him and you love the brethren. And nobody sees how behind the scenes you're crying out for them. You're thinking about Jesus. He came here for you and me. He came here and laid down everything for you and for me. He was not self-focused. He was rather focused on you and me. Lake explained the secret of religious beating is that it assists men's hearts to open. They become receptive and the love of God finds vent in their nature for a little while. What a thought that we could so in every encounter, in every meeting where people come and have intercourse with us, fellowship with us. There will be an impartation, a touch of this love in their life. They will be lifted. But you can't lift somebody until you've been lifted in the secret place and brought into something bigger than you. Into that place where that love is greater than your love and it swallows you, overwhelms you, and the world sees it, knows it. A love where there's no going back. And you're no longer just speaking where people is, oh, they don't want to be around you. You're obnoxious. We know about the obnoxious Christians. We know about the Christians that want to make a whole lot of noise. But there's no substance. There's no love. That one scripture we take out of context, speaking the truth in love. But really, when we read it correctly, it's manifesting the truth of love. Is it in you? See, we want to use it towards somebody else. That I speak this thing to you, this correction. Oh, but I speak it in love. But rather the call is that we in our life so surrender in the secret place that we manifest the truth of that love in us. Because how can I bring a correction to you if it's not corrected me first? I cannot bring you to a place of overcoming something that I have not overcome. I can't give you life if I'm not abounding in it. And I can't share love with you if I don't know it. And so I must cling in the secret place. I must pursue and go after and say, God, you've got to overwhelm me. How many messages do we preach that have many words, but no depth, no integration, no filling with love? So that with every word spoken, they drip ooze with his love and people are touched. And all of a sudden they're caught up in this thought about his love. It draws them, it lifts them, it liberates them. In Song of Solomon 8 verse 6, Put me like a seal over your heart, like a seal over your arm. For love is as strong as death. You know, there's a love that's stronger than death, and that's Jesus' love. This is this heavenly love. There is no death that is not overcome. It is life. It's a living love, and everything it touches, it brings to life. And I'm grateful. How many people do you know that are broken, abiding in that place of depression, discouragement, and death? And we are meant to come with a message dripping with that love that brings life, that every brown, dead place becomes living and green where life springs up, fresh hope brings, springs up, because we have in that love abiding hope, abiding faith. We bring people into a living encounter with the Master whom we know. Our lives demonstrate This is real. We are secure in it, kept, overwhelmed, overwhelmed. Lake Trent said this, I wonder if there's anything that could not be accomplished through the love of God. I really believe that when we get in this place where we are so overwhelmed, so concerned that we start to see and think, and the Father's heart, the Father's vision for our lives, for our community, for our families, we see it, we know it, it breaks us. It becomes the burden. It's no longer us 
trying to plead with the Father, do this. But now we've captured what the Father thinks, and we pray now according to His will. There's this wonderful place where we now enter and so swallowed up that we begin to pray, and we're so walking in holy fear. So, but we are so aware of what His heart is, what He desires, and we know it's so perfect. Why? Because we know His love. We know how good, how great. We know exactly the intensity, the length, the breadth, the height, and then how it secures. Nothing can separate. It's so perfect. And we stand in this place and we dare ask according to the vision, the burden He's put in us, and we know He's behind it, and we know that he wants us this co-worker that we might see that on the earth. Oh, may God raise up intercessors swallowed up in his love for our families, for our cities, that they get the burden of the Father's heart, that he's able to impregnate them with his vision, with his heartbeat, so that our words are expressions of the heartbeat of the Father. Our prayer is the cry of the Father released on the earth. Paul, Lick said this, Paul says, there is not, love never faileth. That is one infallible state. Try it on your wife, try it on your children, try it on your neighbors. Let me explain that. Love never fails. And many people call me. They're trying to see their marriages restored. They're trying to see their children restored. All these things, real things, real difficulties. And so much, I mean, it's real complex, real difficult. And we have to simply trust in His love. The only way to overcome is His love. It is to be so swallowed up, changed, transformed, so that the way we think, the way we act, and the motivation, the outflow, how we do it, is by His love in His love, revealing His love. Some of us have not lingered long enough. Some of us have not been baked long enough. He's the potter and we're the clay. God, just take this lump of clay and teach me how to love. Show me how to love because love never fails. Love will cause my marriage not to fail. Love will cause this relationship with my children not to fail. Love will cause this not to fail. What? His love. But it's got to be in me. It's got to change me. We look at the impossibilities. Oh, they're called death. We say that the devil's got this one. And look what the devil's got over this one. It's all over. It's too late. It's dead. But this love overcame death. There is nothing that his love cannot overcome. It's just looking for a vessel that is swallowed up, consumed in, because it will change you. It will change your prayer life, and you'll get so in agreement with heaven that the Father was able to now birth in and through you His perfect will. We get out of the way. You know how many times God has wanted to do something for our families and for us, but He couldn't get us out of the way? Isaiah 40, verse 31, and this is just the start of that verse. Yet those who wait upon the Lord will gain new strength. There is an exchange that occurs in the deep waters of the secret place. As I press in to that place, the only way that I can go deeper is I become weaker. His strength is perfected in my weakness. And that's a glorious place to come where I stand unable. I stand weak. I stand that my natural abilities are defeated. And I'm a dead man. There's nothing I can do. In Ephesians 3, verses 16 through 19a, that He may grant you, according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened, there's that word strengthened again, with power through His Spirit in the inner man, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the length and the breadth and the height and the depth and to know the love of Christ. How can I come to the place of knowing, swallowed up, consumed? I need to be strengthened. 
How can I be strengthened by the power of his might? I got to be weakened in me. I got to surrender. The degree that I come to an end in me, the degree that I surrender, the degree that I am weak, his strength is perfected. His love begins to overflow. When God can get you and me out of the way, he's able to move. When he can get our opinions, our thoughts, where we come with all of our experiences and we take it and we read it through the perspective of the word, the word bowing to our perspective. We share what we think is good, right, and a blessing, but it doesn't do anything. It doesn't minister the life that people need. It may temporarily bless them. It may make them feel good, but God's not interested in sympathy. He wants comfort, and comfort is forged in the fire of the secret place of surrender where we are weak, where we lay aside all things and say, God, I trust you. Teach me. And I suddenly come to the place where God wants to do something bigger. Oh, God always, those that are swallowed up, consumed in Him, there's always something bigger. We're so small thinking. We're so easily satisfied. We think just this, God, I just need this. And God says, I want to give you more. If I can get you swallowed up in me and let get you to the place where you get out of the way, all your thoughts, your opinions, your rights, to the place where you trust that you know this love, this love is so overwhelming, it secures you, it keeps you, then I give you a bigger vision and I show you bigger things, things that you can't do. I bring into place where I work through you and it's in a demonstration of my spirit and power and the world sees it. And you have life, you have love. Lake said, God was waiting on me until he could get me, get my soul to the sense of that tenderness that was in God. There's a breaking in us where we become soft and tender. That place that there's no us hindering, blocking, twisting. None of the, that which goes through us, tasting of us, reflecting anything of us. There's so many mean. There's so many cruel Christians out there that have not been broken in the secret place, not been tenderized by the Spirit. Let me finish with this. Aren't you glad we're going to preach a series on this? That is the reason that His name is written in imperishable memory. And the name of Jesus Christ is the most revered name in earth or sea or sky. And I am eager to get in that category of folks who can manifest the real love of God all the time. I don't know about you, but I want somewhere in that hall of fame of those that demonstrated His love. I want my name because I'm so in love with Him. I'm so consumed with Him. I have tasted and seen that His love is so much greater. It lifts you. It brings you, it carries with it that fresh vision. It touches those that are in that place about to give in. Where they're hanging on by their nails, this love lifts and says there's a fresh day, there's a fresh hope, there's a fresh now. It takes you and brings you out of the pit and brings you to the secure rock, that place where you can go and face tomorrow, that place that you know you have a hope, a place where you have a promise and you feel secure in it. It brings life. It brings a fresh vision. All those things that you said can no longer be done. It shows you. It shows you. Yes. And it shows you the might of his power. And that he is behind it. It shows you that he is El Shaddai, the more than sufficient one. So that no matter how big the mountain, it has to move because of his love. No matter how deep the depth, that love turns says, I overcame it. And if you will trust me, I will bring you through it. This love is bigger. And he wants to let you know that he's put you as a seal around his heart. But he says, will you put me as a seal around yours? Will you give me the throne of your imagination and your affection? Can the secret place of your heart be given to me that I may consume you, swallow you, and bring you to the place where you were so overwhelmed that you might know the length, height, depth, and breadth of my love, that you would be so grounded and rooted in this love this place of absolute weakness, but yet absolute strength. This place of absolute surrender, but absolute being kept. 
fully secure. The place where the gates of hell cannot prevail. This place that never fails. His love. Oh, I pray this message has blessed you, lift you, touched you. And in the name of Jesus, it would just minister to you even right now. Father, for a breaking through. Father, for fresh oil, a fresh touch from heaven, even now in the name of Jesus. For all those discouraged, depressed, let it lift them. Father God, I thank you that your love sets free. I thank you that Holy Spirit bring each person a revelation of what Jesus did for them today. Get them an understanding of who they are in Christ, of their rights in Jesus. Lift them. Father, let them be blessed, strengthened, secure in you, in the precious name of Jesus. Swallow them up in the name of Jesus. Well, I pray this message has blessed you, swallowed you up, consumed you. If it has, would you please like, share, and subscribe, that we might reach others in the name of Jesus. Consider, you know, check out more in this series. We're going to do more in this series of how to press into the deep waters and just be consumed, swallowed up in His love for this hour. Consider joining our prayer partnership program. It's easy. Go to, Robert, uh, go to robertpairs.org or go to godsgeneralsandrevivals.com and go to the partner page. You know, it costs you nothing and you'll receive our email newsletter. You'll share some of my insight. You'll be invited to my services where I share messages that I don't put on YouTube. I'm also asking for, if you want, by the Spirit, to join our financial partnership. Uh, we're going to build a revival center here, a place where we can build up, train, and, and impart to others that they can go forth. And this message uh, of the secret place, the, the gospel may be preached in this world in this late hour. For more information, we'll be putting up on the Facebook, on our website. Um, it's coming shortly. But I just want to thank you. I just want to bless you. And I want to so remind you that this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice be glad in it because of, through, and for Him. Amen and amen. In the name of Jesus, thank you.